Welcome to the work face and welcome back to Steve Dog's chess toolbox. Yeah, you're watching this. I couldn't have said it better myself. Remember folks, if you're enjoying this and you're finding this selection, this almost like a course of um, antibiotics to chess players, like and subscribe. Anyway, last time on the show, I showed you how to deal with three opening approaches, the Fanny Chadwick, the One-Eyed Joe and Hogfest. Now we're going to move into what I call the mid part of the game. Yeah, it's time to get up to date with the Battlefront. Battlefield. We're going to call it Battlefield. We might call it Battlefront. We're going to call it the Battlefield. Mid game, Battlefield. Let's do this. So here we are back on my app. So I'm going to go into play. I'm going to go against the AR like I'd normally do. And I'm on level four. You guys know that um, level four is the level where I set these games because what I want to do is give you, the user, the opportunity to play against a, what I call a level four opponent. You're not going to be up against the best like people like me, but you're going to be way better than the worst like people like similar people to me. Anyway, let's go and play. So we're going to set up, first of all, the start of this game in a very straightforward way. So I'm going to go off immediately pressurizing, yeah, using the Fanny Chadwick principle I'm going to start immediately pressurising the middle part of the, the board. And many of you will think, yes, Steve, we know all about this. We saw this last time on your show. So right away, we're going to be moving the pieces into a strong position. We've got to try and, on the board here, we've got places, positions here around the middle of the board. We're going to be strengthening those edges, which I just highlighted on the screen for you. And we're going to now move the bishops into an area where that bishop there can, can patrol up and down the board. And we're going to move another bishop in to patrol that part of the board as well. So this is all very, very simple and a straightforward start to this, to what, the way we played the game. So move the knight in now. So this is a really strong Fanny Chadwick position. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move on. And there we go. Yeah, we've just achieved our one-eyed Joe down there, which is our castling. We prefer to call it One-Eyed Joe. So as you can see, now I would say we are now entering the mid-game, okay? So what we need to do now is we need to start a hog-fest approach. So as per last time on the show, you'd have noticed that I very successfully looked for what we call hanging pieces. Hanging pieces, for example, might be a piece that's not protected by another piece. So in this instance, are there any hanging pieces? No, there are not, I say to you. Right. So what we're going to do is we've got to still progress the game. So we're going to move out on this side and um, basically to block the queen. OK, so that's the idea on there. We're just going to block the queen on that in, in that instance there. So. Right now, how do we develop from here? I hear you ask, because a lot of people now they've they've managed to achieve Hogfest. They've managed to start that very strong Fanny Chadwick part of the game. And, they, uh, and they've also achieved their one eye Joe in the bottom corner. And they're sat there thinking, I haven't got a clue what I'm going to do next now because I seem to have ground to a halt. Well, now we're going to the battlefield part of the game. So first up, we're going to apply what we call the bishop's opening. So the bishop's opening, we have two bishops here in place on the board that I'm highlighting now. And what we need to do now is bring those into a more attacking um, situation. That's the word that I'm hoping you're all familiar with. Yes. An attacking situation. What we don't want to do, we don't want to leave ourselves hanging. Okay, so make sure you don't leave yourself hanging. And that's another phrase that you're going to become more and more familiar with as you learn these skills that I bring to you. So let's move on out here first of all um, with the um, prawns, as I like to call them, which is always a good a good thing to do when trying to instigate the bishop's opening. And then what we also need to make make sure we try and also play is what we call. It's basically Russian doll. So it's a move within a move. And it, these moves emanate from Russia, which is, of course, the home to many great chess players. OK, so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually start moving out in a controlled 
manner, right? Always be in control when you're moving out. Right then, so what we're going to do now, yeah, we've got a bishop's opening, which is basically something to do with moving these bishops forward. We've got a Russian doll, and what I want to also apply, which I mentioned last time, is what I call the lateral press. That's the third move, lateral press. And the lateral press is a very, very interesting move, um, and it's something that a lot of people are, to be honest, afraid to try and do so what i could do here is i'm, I'm gonna have to squeeze him on so i'm going to go in take the first piece there with that one and then instantly he's done exactly as i thought he would which is take me back that's another phrase that i quite often use is take me back um and what a great phrase it is as well i will add now what to do you ask a lot of people don't know what to do in this situation now. They just like to sit and watch the game and sort of go like that. Whew. Tough old game, tough game, tough game. Don't like the fact he's going down the side there, as they say. Never like it when he's going down the side. Want to try and bring. Move up there. He's moving that castle. Oh, what's he done? He's moving that one across. He's moving his pawn forwards. Right. He's now left a piece hanging. But what he's trying to do here is. I can move my knight out there and take that pawn above me, that pawn up there. But he's thinking a few moves ahead. If I do that, he will then come down with his castle thingy and take me there. But then I can retreat back into where I was. I'm going to go up there, take that one. He's going to come down with his castle now. He's moved his queen. He's done the old I'm moving my queen move. That's what he's done there, folks. And it's a move that we see week in, week out in the world of what I call chess. Okay. He's done the old let's move the queen. So what I want to do now is I want to apply pressure to that queen in a way that he, to be frank, will not be expecting. Okay. So at the moment, I've got nothing hanging. He can't do too much with that queen. So I want to bring my horsey back into that position there. Right, he's taken one of my pieces, but now what's happening now is he's left it wide open and I've just taken his queen, folks. And that, come on, that's a killer move. Come on. Have it. Have it. Right. Now, right, now this is what I do now in this position, folks. We now apply the bishop's opening. So here we go. Boom. Exactly what I expect him to do. He's taking me back. But now I'm in a positive position. I can now begin to exert a considerable amount of pressure into the midpoint of this game. Something that he won't be expecting. Because I'm effectively a piece up on the dude now... He's now on the run. That He doesn't know what to do. He's moved his knight into a position. What he's worried about is that the bishop's opening now is starting to force the guy back. Boom, have that one, my son. Come on. That's what they say in Russian. Um, but in Russian, of course. So he's now moved his pawn forward to protect the other pawn, which is a very cunning move. But I think you'll agree, folks, that Steve Dog's on top here. Um and this is a new experience for many of you, without a doubt. Right, this is what we're going to do now, folks. If I move my knight into this position, then the bishop, bishop's opening. This bishop then will have a free pass to the right-hand side to that pawn on the right. So in comes the knight into that position. What do you do then?
moving away. If, if in doubt, run away. He's castled. He's just pulled, folks, what we in the the um, the trade call the one-eyed Joe. And he's done that because he's under considerable pressure at the moment as we push this game forward. So here we go. Here we are in a situation now. I'm beginning to push back after using the um, techniques that I've brought to you, the opposition in quite a, um, an aggressive manner. He's trying to put a squeeze down the right-hand side. So in this sort of area on the board here, but as you can see quite quickly, he's now, well, I would call in deep trouble. He doesn't really know how to get out of this. And many players in this part of the game don't know how to finish guys off. So um, I'm going to show you um, a little bit of a glimpse of what I call end game. And we're going to deal with that right now because I'm getting close to the end game now. Um, there will be other videos coming out which will also show you further techniques in the end game. I'm not going to actually mention those techniques now. I'm going to save that for next time for you to enjoy. But here we go. We're now going to move into what I call the end game. So, welcome back. <laughs> Come on. Right. Okay. Radio. This is what we're going to do. Right, what I want to do is I want to bring my rook here into play. So if I'm moving my horsey back to there, he might get taken, but I can take him back with my um, bishop um, if he takes me. I can take him back. And what I've actually done is I'll sacrifice a piece, which not a lot of people would like to do. That allows me now to bring other pieces into the battlefield. Okay, and now I'm actually on top. His horsey can give me more danger than you would imagine. So I'm just going to go in and go, well, I've had that, my son. And he's going to take me back, but it doesn't matter. He's he's fighting a losing battle because... Oh, press the wrong button. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to bring this one right up and take that pawn, didn't I? But I pressed the wrong button. That would have opened the game up for me then. An error. An error made by Steve Dog. You don't see that very often. What we're going to do instead, we are going to start bashing his pawns like that, just like that. And now he's getting a bit frightened. Um, but I need really to start squeezing his pieces a little bit more. So... I'm better off taking his pawn here than if he takes my castle, which he didn't. There. That is the move I was thinking of. That is how he squeezes, guys, folks. That's how you squeeze him. And now we bring in dismantling his team. A very, very, very um, efficient manner. And now what we need to do now is just basically kill him off, okay? By leaving the pawns in play at the moment, it means that the guy's going to struggle to get into a checkmate situation. And that's something that a lot of you guys got to make sure you don't end up with someone. A bit of shadow there, that's quite nice, isn't it? Getting into a checkmate situation. So what I'm going to do quite simply is I'm now going to move my queen into a position of strength, which is there. That puts him in the check situation. And from here, we can um, deploy our end game move. And this will win us the game, folks. So hold tight. And let's do this. There's many, many possibilities here. But I'm going to, as they like to say in the trade, move the queen diagonally. Okay. White. Checkmate. You win. 
So folks, hopefully you thoroughly enjoyed that. I'm just gonna switch that screen off now and just quickly go over with you the highlights you need to take with you with this. So, after successfully deploying the openings of the video of the chess game um, using Fanny Chadwick, using the One-Eyed Joe and using the Hogfest techniques, which I taught you in the last game, we then successfully put the opponent under considerable pressure. And then we started to apply the following principles. First up, we applied the bishop's, bishop's opening. So I'm going to call that point four because we have the first three from the last video. Click above if you want those. So point four was the bishop's opening. Point five was what we call Rosh, Russian dolls. That's our move within a move. And I think you'll agree that that was very, very good. And finally, we applied yet again the lateral press. That's right, we applied the lateral press. And that was really the move in the middle of the game, which then made the errors occur. We waited for errors. We sat defensively in that battlefield element of the game. And then we moved into the end zone. So, folks, hopefully you enjoyed that. Tune in next time where we will focus more on some other tactical options in the end zone of chess at Steve Dog's Chess Toolbox. Catch you guys on the chess smash flip side. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs>